So now we're on the fourth slide, example 4a, and we're asked to find the antiderivative or to integrate 3x squared plus 1 over x cubed plus x. Now I'm going to scan my denominator, which says x cubed plus x, and its derivative would be 3x squared plus 1. So it looks like we've hit the jackpot here because the numerator is merely the derivative of the denominator. So let's do our u substitution to be sure, and let's allow the denominator to be u. Differentiating with respect to x, I get du equals 3x squared plus 1 dx. Because this is a multi-termed expression, the parentheses are really essential. So this is all I need because that's a direct match with what I have in the numerator. So I'm going to go ahead and place these elements in a box for organizational purposes. Now rewriting what I have exclusively in terms of u, I have 1 over x cubed plus x, which is really just 1 over u. And then this here, 3x squared plus 1 dx, is revealed to us in our box as just being du. So this really couldn't be any easier. So using our rule, we're going to get the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then I need to back substitute in and say the natural log of the absolute value of x cubed plus x plus c. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Look at your denominator and hope that its derivative occurs in the numerator. Let's go on to sample 4b. So in this problem, we're asked to integrate secant squared x over tan x dx. And once again, because I have a fraction, I'm suspicious of this whole new natural logarithmic integration. I've got a situation where we have a denominator, tangent x, whose derivative, secant squared x, is in the numerator. So I think this is another example of something that's very form-fitting to our rule. To be sure though, let's use u substitution, allowing u to be tan x. Differentiating both sides with respect to x, we end up getting du equals secant squared x dx. Now this happens to be a direct match with what we have in the numerator, so this is really good. This is going to make our life very easy. So for organizational purposes, I'm going to put these two elements in a box. And now I'm going to rewrite my initially stated problem exclusively in terms of u. So we're going to have 1 over u. And then of course, secant squared x dx can be replaced with du. Applying our rule, we end up getting the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then I have to remember to back substitute for u. So this is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of tan x plus c. And that's it. We've successfully integrated. Let's move on to the next example. So in example 4c, we have another integral that involves a fraction. So my attention is initially drawn to the denominator where I see x squared plus 2x. Now the derivative of that is 2x plus 2. But what we have in the numerator is exactly half of that. It's x plus 1. So I think this is going to work out, but I'm a little bit fuzzy doing this in my head. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the proper channels and write down the whole substitution step, allowing u to be x squared plus 2x. I'm going to differentiate with respect to x, leaving me with du is equal to 2x plus 2 dx. And because this is a multi-termed expression, it's going to be really important that I write that in parentheses. Now I'm going to factor out the 2. So du is going to equal twice x plus 1 dx. And we don't have a, a 2 floating around in the numerator. So I'm going to get rid of this 2 by division. And I'm going to say that 1 half du is equal to x plus 1 dx. And I'm going to take all of these elements and place them in a box for organizational purposes. Now it just so happens that the numerator includes x plus 1 dx. 
And this is good because we have x plus 1 dx right here. But we have to remember that there is this extra half also included. So now I'm going to take my initially stated problem and I'm going to write it exclusively in terms of u. So I'm going to start by writing 1 over u and then x plus 1 dx can be replaced with 1 half du. And I'll place that 1 half out in front because it's a constant. Now applying our rule we're going to get 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And now I have to remember to back substitute for u. I've got to ask myself, what was u in the first place? And u in this case is x squared plus 2x. And that's it. Let's move to our final example. So this is our last example in this particular video. And again, I'm asked to integrate a fraction. So whenever I have a fraction, what I like to do is focus in on that denominator, which is 3x plus 2. Now, its derivative is 3, which isn't quite like my numerator. So I'm going to go through the proper channels and use u substitution so I can get the desired outcome. I'm going to allow u to be 3x plus 2. Differentiating both sides with respect to x, I end up getting du is equal to 3 dx. Now I don't need that 3, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3, leaving me with 1 third du is equal to dx. And I'm going to take all of these elements and place them in a box for organizational purposes. Now I'm going to rewrite my initially stated problem exclusively in terms of u. I'm going to start by writing 1 over u. And then the numerator includes 1 dx. Well, we just happen to have 1 dx right here in our organizational box. And that's the same as 1 third du. So I'm going to take that 1 third, which is a constant, and I'm going to write it on the outside and place the du here. And this is form fitting for our rule. So I'm going to write the 1 third. I'm going to write the constant again. And we're going to end up with the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And of course, I'm not going to forget to back substitute in for u. And u in this case is going to be 3x plus 2. So here we have our final answer. Before finishing this video, let's just read the note in red at the bottom of the slide. It says, all sample questions so far in this video had numerators that were the derivative of the denominators or were off by some constant. What that is telling me is that there's going to be future problems where when we do the u substitution we're not going to be off by a 3 or off by a 2 or off by a 4 or something like that. We might have an extra variable and we will have to learn how to tackle those situations as they come up.